It's time once again for a musical offering with program director David Dubal, a survey of the works of Chopin. And our musical offering is Etudes by Chopin. And I am more than pleased to have back with me Martin Cannon, faculty member of the celebrated Juilliard School and artist in residence at the State University of New York at Stony Brook. That's correct. And Teachers College faculty, <laughs> where many people that I know have studied with you. Mm -hmm. In fact, there are many people that will not play in New York until they play for you, <laughs> and I know that for sure. You're too kind. And you're too busy, probably, right? <laughs> so thank you for coming again to discuss the etudes. And I think we ended with Opus 10, number 10. Opus last, 25. Last, I'm percent. sorry, Opus 25, right? The B minor octave etude. And this was legato octaves. Legato octaves. That's the particular uh, specialty of the Chopin study. That uh, involves, I, I should have mentioned that last night, a good deal of uh, in and out motions of the arm going from black notes to white notes, which is uh, one additional problem along with a uh, hundred others that that piece uh, possesses. This is a work that certainly requires a great virtuosity and beautiful singing tone in the uh, section in B major, the middle section. In fact, this is one of the few etudes with a middle section, isn't it? I was thinking just that point, uh, David. Only the uh, E minor right. mm -hmm. and the B minor etudes are in a conventional ABA form, a clearly delineated uh, form like that. How about hearing someone that's not noted for a Chopin playing in this tumultuous work, Paul Badruskoda. Good.
Badura Skoda playing the B minor octave etude, and uh, Martin, I don't think he scratched the surface of the work. It, uh, I found it rather a, a tame sounding uh, performance, and uh, even in the uh, lyrical middle section, not uh, entirely convincing in uh, phrasing and sound. Inflection of the right. beautiful, luscious melody. Well, we have played on this uh, these etude programs many a pianist, uh, Bachaus, Badura Skoda, who else? Ashkenazi, Novaius, um, Slobodjanic, Slobodjanic, Browning, Corto, Browning, Polini, mm -hmm. Levine. Levine. So uh, obviously these etudes are very much in the living uh, repertory and in the recorded one. And we have a new pianist joining this illustrious company, Anton Querti. Let's hear him do the octave etude. Anton Querti in the octave etude in B minor. Well, Martin, what's your comment on that performance? I liked uh, the uh, outer sections. I found, uh, again, uh, one of my, I guess by now, standard uh, complaints that uh, the uh, the slow lyrical middle section was, uh, for my feeling, uh, quite a bit too slow. Let's move to another performance then, and one that uh, the middle section will probably more <laughs> suit you, and that's, of course, Alfred Cortot. Alfred Cortot in the B minor etude. Well, the 
the middle section, please, you more? <laughs> yes, I would like to uh, combine uh, uh, Querti's opening section and, and uh, closing section with Courteau's middle section. I think the... Uh, I, perhaps I didn't say enough about the Querti that we heard before. I think it was, in many ways, a very beautiful uh, performance, beautiful sound, and uh, beautifully sensitive, only, as I said, too slow. But uh, Courteau, of course, uh, is not the technical uh, master uh, that uh, many of the others are, and uh, this performance is saved only by a very lovely, if perhaps overly romantic to our present taste, uh, middle section. Well, it's a luscious key B major, and he can't resist. <laughs> That's right. And he touches the heart. Well, the next one, the next pianist. Can we really call Levine a pianist? <laughs> he was more. In 1889, when Levine was 14, Anton Rubinstein came to hear the pupils of the Moscow Conservatory play. Levine was last, after Rachmaninoff and Scriabin. That was a good crop, David. What a year. Rubinstein kept him at the keyboard for a full hour. Bravo, he cried, as the big red-headed boy played Chopin's B minor etude. You will be a great man, Rubinstein uttered. Later, this work became one of Levine's specialties. Joseph Hoffman called it the most colossal octave playing I have ever heard. Well, praise from that source is yeah. not to be taken lightly. This was recorded June 10th, 1935. Let's hear the octave etude. Joseph Levin.
it's laughable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've heard four performances, this being, in my opinion, Martin, quite superior. Supreme, I would say. It uh, would be hard to think of uh, uh, the outer section being played any more thrillingly or the middle section being played uh, any more lovingly, sensitively, perhaps uh, a little more to uh, modern taste uh, mm -hmm. than the quarteau, don't you think, David? That, uh, oh, yes. Levine is somehow uh, perhaps a little more reserved in temperament uh, yes, he than is. quarteau, he, but uh, he keeps uh, a, a, perhaps a, the line just uh, purer. Beautiful middle section, uh, the finest middle section also, we've heard, and uh, he lets the music speak for itself. He's, yes. he, he's listening. Yes. And uh, he, he was one of the great ones. And you know, I, may I just sure. uh, say, the, the, uh, uh, again, the impression I have of uh, uh, someone like Levine, who played probably just a few of the etudes in public, but the ones he plays, he, he's so identified mm. with uh, that piece is so full of, uh, that performance is so full of marvelous details things that must have come over a period of time uh, that again shows the, the uh, advantage of not spreading oneself too thin, not trying to do everything, but trying to do certain things supremely well, and I think that's, uh, that's an example of that. Yes, uh, the romantic pianist, uh, the, uh, trained in the late 19th century, he was taught to, to make things supreme, not worry about, uh, do you know, four scherzi or all four ballades. We have a craze for the completeness we have recitals uh, full of um, the 24 preludes, or the 24 pre uh, etudes, the, the four ballades, and uh, uh, one loses a great deal on that, I think. Well, uh, have you heard the Lazar Behrman performance of the Octave Etude? No, I haven't, and I would, uh, well, I'm I would like to. very curious for your opinion. Lazar Behrman in the... Tenth etude in B minor, um, Martin Cannon. <laughs> that was a thrilling performance, David. Uh, the tempo was uh, considerably faster uh, uh, than any of the others, and uh, played with uh, enormous uh, elan and uh, and uh, uh, dramatic power. I thought that was really quite uh, quite extraordinary. Quite extraordinary. We will return very soon. What is one of the most well-known and highly respected museums in the United States? Many people would say the American Museum of Natural History in New York. Did you know that the museum publishes a magazine called Natural History? And that for just $10, you can join the museum for a year and receive 10 issues of this splendid magazine? Natural History shows you the universe with a true appreciation of its vast diversity. Each issue takes you on a trip around the world, into the heavens and below the sea. Almost as timely as your newspaper, it's as absorbing as any adventure story with the best and most vivid photography you've ever seen. And for the naturally curious person, regardless of age, natural history is an excellent source of reference. Why don't you join the museum today? As a member, you'll have unlimited free admission and use of the exclusive member's lounge. You'll receive two surprise bonus gifts, plus discounts on all items in the museum gift shops. And best of all, you'll be getting 10 entertaining, information-packed issues of natural history. All this for only $10 a year. Why don't you join right now? It's easy to do. Just call this toll-free number, 800-228-1776. Dial 800, then 228-1776. Call right now, 800-228-1776. Austin Limited is the fine men's clothing store in Rockefeller Center. I'm Irving Bluestone, head of Austin's, to tell you about newly stocked spring and summer apparel. Handsome suits for business and dress, colorful jackets for weekends, and related slacks are stocked in sizes to fit most men. And if you require changes from standard patterns, Austin's offers special orders. Visit our store and you will see old world fabrics of great beauty in a variety of styles ranging from traditional to contemporary. Our prices are modest for high quality in both ready-made and special cutting. And we treat the fitting of slacks with the same care as we do fine suits. 
Incidentally, slacks are stocked in shorts and longs, as well as regulars. Ask for me, Irving Bluestone, or our manager, Oscar Holden, and we'll see that you are carefully served. Austin Limited, 45 West 48th Street, in Rockefeller Center. My guest, Martin Cannon, and... Uh if it suits you, we will continue and leave the B minor etude alone and continue with the winter wind etude. We get to an easy one now, right? An easy one. Would you describe the technical difficulties? Stupendous. <laughs> <laughs> um, first of all, the left hand has to play very fast and uh, uh, strongly, as does the right hand in this piece. And then it is a uh, an etude that. Uh, is constantly uh, moving between the weak fingers and the strong fingers of the hand. So there's a constant uh, kind of uh, uh, test of strength and equality between the uh, stronger and uh, weaker fingers. And what an exquisite work it is, and the pianistic layout just making this winter wind happen. It's, it's, it's a cataclysmic It's uh, a masterwork, piece, of course. It's an, it's an absolute masterpiece. We have a performance by a new pianist on the program, Michael Ponti. from a live performance in Hong Kong by Michael Ponti of the Winter Wind Etude 
Frankly, I, I didn't like it. I thought it was nerve-wracking uh, accents that, that seemed yeah. not to have any uh, purpose. Yeah, there was something a little um, artificial, I felt, in the uh, timing, that uh, those big retards at the beginning of the... There's a uh, 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 certain uh, rhetoric in the piece, but I think that uh, uh, somehow he uh, lays it on a little too thick, mm -hmm, let's say. Mm -hmm. Atmosphere certainly lacking. Um, how about Vladimir Ashkenazi? Good. Ashkenazi in the Winter Wind. You know, that's one of the few works that Chopin himself uses, uh, writes a scale out. He's, is, is so, the yes. scale is, is integral to the technique of, yes. of piano playing, yes. and yet so seldom will he use it. Of course, during his time, the, the minor composers just threw scales everywhere. Right. He must have been totally sick of them. Right. Especially in the etudes, I think there's hardly a, right. an, a, an actual... Uh, uh, scale in mm -hmm. its uh, original form, such as this. Well, that was Ashkenazi, and um, very uh, it was all well, right. Supremely competent. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, uh, that's uh, harsh words for uh, a great artist, and uh, uh, but uh, I suppose that's one of the uh, uh, either advantages or disadvantages of uh, sitting here and listening to one great artist after another. You do realize that. Uh, the uh, really supreme performances uh, are not uh, don't come along uh, all the time. By no means, and I think we might have a supreme performance of this by Joseph Levine, recorded June tenth, nineteen thirty-five.
Joseph Levine in The Winter Wind. Martin Cannon? Colossal. Yeah, really. <laughs> That's... Well, this is a recording that uh, I think everyone should have. Uh, it's a Victrola Mono, meaning it's <laughs> RCA, VIC. 1544 with very, very sympathetic liner notes by Edmund Morris. Well, time is a moving, and uh, the last etude in Opus 25 coming up is called The Ocean, another title Chopin did not give it. And what's the technical difficulty here? Well, <clears throat> of course, this is a study in uh, arpeggio playing. Um, the problem is uh, the problem of... Uh, uh, not not uh, not arpeggios where the thumb goes under, but just uh, uh, playing consecutive chords uh, uh, up the piano, up and down the piano. Therefore, the uh, fifth finger and the thumb, which come directly uh, 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 next to each other, have to be equal. Um, and there's a considerable problem of uh, endurance. I would say it's not perhaps one of the hardest etudes because the uh, the basic pattern lies right under the hand very well for a uh, for a pianist but it's hard to make it uh, truly surging and truly monumental as it must be uh, it is certainly an effective work oh, yes the ocean etude and our performance by another new pianist to the group andre watts andre watts very good very exciting no complaints. Let's have another performance, and we will hear Augustin on Yavis, The Ocean Etude. <laughs> Ocean Etude, hardly Chopin the dandy, right? <laughs> no, 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 indeed. Chopin very much uh, in a Beethovenian uh, frame of mind, it seems to me, hurling yeah. his uh, thunderbolts. He ends his mighty Etudes, the Opus 25 in C minor, and that was Augustin on Yevis. And uh, around ten years later, he composes three nouvelle Etudes, three new Etudes for a method uh, that was published by uh, Moschelis and uh, had many different contributors to it. Uh, the only etudes that have survived are these. Some people call them posthumous. They were actually published in 1840, though. Hmm. And uh, let's hear Rubinstein in the first of those in F minor.
the etude in F minor, Rubinstein. Well, Martin? Um, <coughs> sensitive playing, but uh, it seems to me one could do a good deal more with that piece. And you brought your recording of Courteau to show us <laughs> what can be done. Well, I didn't want to say that, but uh, why don't we hear Courteau and... And the audience here. will make up their own mind, right. of course. Exquisite. You know, David, I can close on a slightly personal note. I taught uh, today. I gave seven lessons and uh, mm. had a, a master class uh, following the uh, lessons, and that was two more hours. At Juilliard, music, yeah. At, at Juilliard. And uh, still, hearing this performance now at uh, 10 o'clock at night, I'm still moved and think how beautiful music is any hour, day or night. I exactly understand what you mean. Tomorrow night we will continue with these etudes and also go into the marvels that are the Chopin impromptus. We have some Courteau performances of the impromptus. Martin Cannon, thank you very much. Pleasure, David. And thank you for listening. <laughs>